this episode of Untapped VA. Williamsburg, Virginia, one of the legs of the famous historic triangle, is also home to some of the most dynamic breweries in the state. We'll visit Aleworks Brewing Company, a microbrewer committed to classic standards while also satisfying a penchant for pressing boundaries with bold flavors. Also, Brass Cannon, a brand new brewery taking the Williamsburg area by storm. All this and more on this episode of Untapped VA. One leg of the famous historic triangle, Williamsburg, Virginia, is home to great historical locations, incredible food, and fantastic craft beer. In her never-ending search for the perfect beer, Bianca's first stop in Williamsburg is none other than Aleworks Brewing Company. So this is your brewery, huh? This is it. Nice, impressive. Tell me, you have history with this company. You That's were their right. first employee? That's correct. Were you like 12 when you were hired? I think it feels like it. So <laughs> many, uh, 10 years and many gray hairs later, here we are. So uh, it's been a fun ride. So what was your first position? What did you start at? And then obviously you've grown oh, immensely. So on my, during my interview rather, I had nice pants and a dress shirt. Uh, they said, all right, let's do this. We immediately went to the brewery and packaged beer for the next uh, five, six hours. Oh so my gosh. That was my you went straight interview. to work. Oh yeah, immediately. <laughs> so this is unusual. Tell me about this. So this is one of the aspects that separates us from some of the other breweries which you might be familiar. Um, this is part of a Pugsley brewing system which essentially is a throwback to a different time. Uh, when they made beer in England years past, they made it with direct flame and essentially it was a lot more laborious than it is nowadays. A lot less efficient, but it makes a different product slightly. So we get a little bit different character by using this older style technology. Like what sort of, what, what's the differences? So uh, for instance, in a mod, this is called a mash tun. Uh -huh. We crush grain and we put it into this vessel with hot water uh -huh. and the enzymes convert all the starches in those kernels into sugar. Okay. So in a modern brew house, it would be all stainless steel and it would have steam jackets which would allow you to, to heat the vessel and that's up to different. And of these? Those are fermenters. Oh, so okay. Those are fermenters. So different, different. Yeah, essentially <laughs> it's just a very rudimentary style system. Okay. And it needs fire. It needs direct fire. So <laughs> we, uh, we use direct fire on the other vessels to heat the water and, and put it into this one. So that's where the fire and water happens and then it gets... That's correct, yeah. And then it's poured into whatever container it will be in directly from here. Yeah, so we pump the sugary uh, liquid out of this vessel into another fire, uh, sorry, another kettle, uh -huh. and we boil it there and add hops. So we boil it for about an hour, we add our hops, we add certain salts, and afterwards we cool that sugary liquid we call wort, W-O-R-T, yeah. down to about 68 degrees, and we pump it into one of these fermenters over here, okay. and that's where we add the yeast. Uh, once we add the yeast, it's technically called beer, mm -hmm. so that yeast will start to chew on those sugars and turning it in, turn that, the residual will be alcohol and CO2. Uh -huh. So if you hear that bubbling in the background, that's the yeast chewing up those sugars and releasing CO2 oh, as a black cool. product. Cool, and yeah. then after that, it gets carbonated and bottled. Mm -hmm. So when the fermentation completes, when it's finished, we crash the tank. So we have cooling, the ability to cool these tanks, uh -huh. and we set the temperature down to freezing, and that essentially puts the yeast into a hibernation mode and it all settles out. Uh -huh. After fermentation is complete, the beer is chilled, we pump it into another tank, which is called a bright tank. Uh -huh. And that essentially means that it's carbonated. So we take these long stones and we pump CO2 through it, and that carbonates the beer up so it's nice and bubbly. So tell me about what we have going on over here. So these are bourbon barrels. Occasionally we will store our beer in bourbon barrels and uh, it essentially allows us to extract different flavors from the, from the, the wood and the previous tenant of the barrel, in this case bourbon. So this is our barley wine, it's called Grain Elimination. We uh -huh. release it once a year. Uh -huh. So we brew it in the slow months, lay it down for a smoother product with an enriched character. It's a special one. It's a special one. Yeah. How long has it been barreled? This one, for seven months. Okay. So we do a number of barrel beers and then it's anywhere from a year and a half to seven months to a couple that are just a couple months. Uh -huh. in, so. Tell me about like these little doohickeys right here. 
So these little doohickeys are airlocks, uh -huh. and essentially if any fermentation continues to take place during the residency of the, the beer in the barrels, it allows the carbon dioxide to escape through the sanitized water without any bugs or air getting into the product. Oh, very so cool. We essentially would like to take quality very seriously here. Um, we don't do many bar barrel aged beers, but when we do, we like to be very uh, particular as to how we do it. Uh -huh. So we'll actually take samples and run it through a PCR machine. What's that? Uh, Poly, polyamorase chain reaction. So we run it. We run a DNA test on this oh to make gosh. sure there's no bacteria. Everything's clean. Uh -huh. So we do that for all of our products. Well, we try to spare no expense. Yeah, you don't want to get bacteria in your beer. That's right. <laughs> it's all over. That's correct. <laughs> You've made all this that for nothing. For yeah. nothing. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Well, I want to talk to you about something that I just think is fascinating. So you've been here 10 years, mm -hmm. but the big thing that's different with the beer scene in Virginia now is that everybody has tasting room. Right. But you managed to last those 10 years yes. or eight or so mm -hmm. without a tasting room. I mean, that's a kind of a remarkable feat. It's different nowadays. So 10 years ago, it was a different landscape. Yeah. Uh, we were allowed to have a sampling area where okay. you could come and have two ounces of beer and you could just try it before you bought a six pack or whatever you wanted to take to go. But on premise sales, for example, a pint, yeah. you couldn't do. So uh, we worked very hard with the Virginia Brewers Guild to pass SB604, which allows us to sell on premise. Oh, cool. So, so you were some of the, you were on the forefront of that. We were, yeah. We yeah. were a very small organization at the time. We're very large now, larger yeah. rather and uh, we are allowed to sell beers. We're trying to catch up with all the other guys who have started with that luxury, so it's, it's been a, a real treat. Well, and you've added on a tasting room and everything because of that. Yeah, we have. So we actually expanded our sampling room yeah. into a full tasting room where we have a bar area where we taste beer, and uh, you can actually buy a pint or take beer to go, and we have food trucks come in from time to time. Oh, nice. We always try to sell just a pretzel as just a regular a offering. Yeah, food. yeah. So. Cool, well, can I try a beer, like right now? Absolutely. Let's go talk to Michael. <laughs> cool. Hey all, I'm here with Michael Clare, Operations Director at Aleworks Brewing Company. We're here to talk about some of the changes that has happened in 2016. Big year, 10 year anniversary. Very big year, 10 years. Uh, we made a huge deal about it. Uh, it was something we're very proud to reach. Absolutely, and you were one of the first, the first breweries here it in Virginia. It feels like it, it feels like <laughs> it. There were some before us, but uh, not nearly as many 10 years ago as there are now. Yeah, well tell us about some of the, some of the changes that you've made in 2016. Well, uh, we've had to increase our capacity by 50% just to keep up with the orders. Um, so things are going great there. Yeah. Um, everything's rolling along with that. Um, we took the opportunity uh, with our 10-year anniversary to look at our packaging mm -hmm. and kind of figure out what's working and what's not. And so we're making some huge changes on that point. So tell me about packaging. You started and then it kind of snowballed? Yeah, well, there was like one thing, well, we can't, we can't really do this beer anymore because the ingredients are getting tough. And then it's like, well, for changing that, what about this? And then it was, well, I want to drink this. And uh, like we had never done a lager before. Oh, wow. Uh, so we're introducing weekend lager, which is a very big difference for a place called Aleworks. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> uh, but it was what the brewers wanted. Uh -huh. And we said, well, if that's what you want to drink, then that's what we should make. Absolutely. Follow your heart. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, shall we try some of these here? Tell me about these. Absolutely. Um, Let's get Valerie over here to get us some beers. All right. So the packaging started off. This has this always been the logo, or did this change That's, this year? It's changed a little bit over the years. Uh -huh. um, been tweaked, uh, the, but the logo is a mainstay. It's one of the things that's changing. Uh, we took the graphics off the label uh, because we wanted to make it more about just about the beer. Yeah. It's not about some fancy image. Uh, we just want to be authentic and real and natural. People know what they're getting. Exactly. There's no confusion. The tr the. The idea is if you know that it's Aleworks, you know that you can trust that it's a good beer. Yeah. Oh, look, here we go. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Valerie. Chesapeake? <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so what do we have here? Uh, that's our Chesapeake Pale Ale. That is our most popular beer, so we did nothing to that. It's just a really balanced pale ale. It's our best seller and kind of uh, the mainstay of our lineup. Uh, this one's a weekend lager. Uh, it's our first lager, uh, which is a big uh, step out for Aleworks. Yep. All right, well, cheers. Cheers. I really like this. Yeah. I can tell why this makes people happy. Yeah. Nice and drinkable. So one thing that I found interesting in my research about you guys is that you have Cicerone certified beer servers. Will yes. you tell me what that's all about? Well, the Cicerone program uh, is a way of testing people for their beer knowledge. And 
Um, since our tasting room is all about education, uh -huh. um, we require that all of our staff be Cicerone certified beer servers, uh, so just to make sure that they know how to respect the beer uh -huh. the, the same way the brewers would. Nice. So they go through like a series of tests and that sort of thing, or mm -hmm. taste tests? Yeah, we start, we start them off with the entry level, but we have a lot of our staff is working on the uh, second, third, and fourth tiers. Oh, interesting. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And that helps them, I would guess, pick out like the notes and the flavors and the hints and the smells and all that sort of thing. Absolutely. We do not get a better opportunity to teach people about what we do here uh -huh. uh, than when they come here. So we want to make sure that our staff is well-educated so that they can share that knowledge uh, with our guests. Absolutely. Well, one thing that I loved is that you all offer two and a half ounce pours and three ounce pours so people aren't committed to a full six ounce, 12 ounce, you know, you can actually try and sample different things that you might not usually sample. Yeah, on any day we could have anywhere from 10 to 16 different beers on tap. Wow. And uh, most people want to try more than one, oh, so yeah. we'd like to give them smaller portions so they can uh, really try everything out. <laughs> yeah, and get home safe. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm that type of person though. I'd be like, two ounces of that, two ounces of that, two ounces of that, just to try it all. A lot of, yeah, as a lot of people do. You gotta keep looking until you find your favorite. So what is your your personal favorite part of the whole brewery process, personally? I think for me, it's working with a small group of people who are all passionate about what we're doing. Yeah. Um, we really believe in each other and we believe in the beer and it's just great getting to come to work every day with people who are here because they want to be here. And passionate about yeah. the product. Well, and you weren't from a brewery background, right? You kind of came in. No. I'm not sure you really wanted to. I did not think a, a brewery was uh, something that I wanted to be a part of, um, but when the opportunity to be a part of Aleworks came up, I realized that's really where I belong and what I wanted to do. Yeah, you really support the mission. Absolutely. Well, it's a good mission to follow, definitely. It's a fun mission. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Aleworks Brewing Company is located on Ewell Road in Williamsburg. Check out their website and make sure to say hello on your next visit to Williamsburg. After the break, our next stop, Brass Cannon Brewing and its shiny new tap room built from scratch. This is one location you won't want to miss. Don't go away. Our next stop on the Williamsburg tour is Brass Cannon Brewing located on Moortown Road. We had the opportunity to sit with one of the co-owners to learn what makes this brewery so unique. I'm Phil Norfolk and this is Brass Cannon Brewing at our new location on Moortown Road. Uh, we were formerly in Toano for four years but have uh, been open here for about four months now and it's been fantastic. We have a much more open and inviting space here, it's easier to find and we're really excited to have this spot. got uh, food trucks coming out every week as well as uh, live music on a weekly basis now. I've really enjoyed building out the space, uh, personalizing it more and more over time and people have really been enjoying a nice friendly atmosphere that results from such. It's been really good just being able to chat with everybody that comes in and uh, really experience them experiencing the beer. <laughs> We chose the name Brass Cannon because we felt it really reflected the history of the area. You can't go pretty much anywhere in Virginia without stumbling across a battlefield. And we really like the symbol of the cannon. And the great thing there is when we expand, everyone has history that involves cannons, it turns out. For someone who hasn't really experienced microbrews before, uh, the great thing is the range of styles available. So we have a hoppy IPA, we have our Angry Scott that's uh, very malty and sweet. We're trying to hit the range so that whatever you might like will have something that'll fit it. We haven't been here very long, but we're already seeing folks from our old location finding us anew and a lot of new folks finding us and continuing to come back again. Hey, Barrett. Hey, Monica, good to see you. Good to see you. Come on in. Have a beer. All right. So have you heard about this place before? Um, I am actually not. Well, get ready. I've heard great things, and it apparently is the only place in Williamsburg, and only brewery, where the brewmasters are also the owners. Oh, wow, the owners. Mm -hmm. So you expect some good quality. Well, exactly. <laughs> All right, what are we drinking? Uh, you know, I don't know for sure. Maybe uh, you could possibly help me out a little bit I and uh, see if there's something 
that we would uh, appreciate on tap. I can help. All right, I'll go talk to that guy. I'll be Thank right back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? I'm doing all right. How about yourself? I'm well, thanks. So it's my friends and my first time here, and we're actually not sure what to have. He is a big stout fan, so I was kind of looking at the first shot for him. Can you mm -hmm. tell me about that one? The first shot's nice. It's got a good body to it. It's nice and roasty. It's a variation of our smooth bore stout. The first shot is actually the first beer uh, we brewed here on our new system. Oh, that's cool. You say we, are you like... I'm one of the owners. There's four oh, of us uh, running the whole thing for the most part. Cool. Well, I'm Bianca. Phil. Nice to meet you, Phil. Good to meet you. Well, then you're the person I should really be talking to. What else do you recommend? So if we went for the first shot for him, what do you recommend for me? I'd recommend our Angry Scott. It's our most popular style. It's very malty and a little bit sweet, so uh -huh. it's a lot of fun. Cool. I'm sold. I'll have All two right. of those. Well, Grab those Angry for Scott you. and First Shot. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Here you are. Awesome. The Scott and the Stout. Cool. Thanks so much, Phil. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Good meeting you. So I just met with cool. Phil. He's Phil. one of the owners. Oh, really? Yeah. So he poured for you the um, First Shot American Stout. It was Ooh. the first beer that they ever made here. Oh, wow. And then I got the Angry Scott. Good morning. Cheers, let's try Thank it. you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really good. Mm, I like mine. Kind of smoky, a little bit. Oh, mine's got a lot of flavor. It's very full of flavor. Uh, there's a lot of beer in there. <laughs> I feel like it's, it's an entire meal in a beer. Well, I know you like stouts, so that's I do, I do. You. I drink there's, you know, Guinness or whatever. You know, it's fantastic. It's just, it, you know, yeah. keeps you going. Yeah, absolutely. You don't need a meal. Uh, no, you don't. Out. You really don't. I mean, that's the true purpose of this, isn't it? <laughs> well, um, so Phil had a lot to say, but he also said that we could actually, like, go back there. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. you know, after we're done, I'll, I can pop in back there and maybe go. Oh, you want to take the reins? Going. Yeah, do you, do you mind? If that's okay, I'd like to go back there and check All out right. what's going on. Good luck. See where maybe my uh, my stout here came from, <laughs> Let's if that's cheers. okay. Cheers. cheers to that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> And I'll leave you with these guys, they can tell you more. Cool, thanks so much. Hey guys, I'm Barrett. Matt, Barrett, how are you? Matt, nice to meet you. Tony. Tony, nice to meet you. So guys, uh, I apparently caught you at a very good time. You did. Would you like to join us? <laughs> I would Tony, indeed. Tony, show them how to do Absolutely. that. Absolutely, just put your glass right there. Okay. And we're pouring, there you go. Ooh, oh my. Yep, well, it's under quite a bit of pressure. That is really good. So what, what am I trying here? Is this what I had outside before the, the, the This is, yeah, that's the smoothbore stout. So that's kind of an all season stout, not super heavy. Uh, we make it with Irish steel cut oats. So it goes down a little bit smoother for a, a lighter stout. Still got some good body to it, but not like a real hits your stomach hard. Uh, kind of like winter weight, we'll say. Uh, kind of stout. <laughs> yeah, no, this is fantastic. So how did y'all get started here? What what's what got you here? Originally, we were three basically home brewers that uh, were, we got together and started brewing together mostly to have someone to drink all the beer we were making. Um, <laughs> we found the hard way, actually, that we were better at it as a group than we were individually. And we started doing really well with it, getting some really positive feedback from people we shared with and uh, decided to make a go of it. Um, so our first brewery, uh, which we had for about four years up in Tuano, was uh, driven on this. This is... Uh, what is this? This, we use this as our mash tun. That's where the, the grain steep. This started life in 1929 as a dough fryer. And has How did been, you get that here? Uh, and so I actually drove up to Allentown, Pennsylvania with my pickup truck and picked it up at scrap price. The whole brewery was basically like that. Uh, we build a brewery for about a tenth of what it usually costs, entirely by repurposing other food grade equipment uh, to something that could at least technically make good beer. Um, a lot of it, there's no temperature control, there's no feedback, so a lot of that means I'm standing up on a ladder with a stainless steel stick, stirring it with one hand down in there with a thermometer, but... It's like old school manual labor. Really old school. Um, but uh, it worked out, we, we made good beer, uh, we did well. It's, a lot of extra work doing it that way, but uh, we were pretty proud of it. That's really cool. And so how long have you been now in this facility? For almost four months. Four months now. And then has, have things changed a lot for you? Yeah, no, it's a lot different. Um, better in almost every way. So whereas this one, I would often literally climb inside with the scrubby and, and, and clean it out by hand. 
Um, with the new system, we basically can hook up the cleaning chemicals to, uh, and push a button and it'll start cleaning itself. Um, there's still a lot of manual labor involved, but it's nowhere near the same level. That is amazing. So um, maybe we can go take a look at what else we got down here. Absolutely. Let's uh, head down here and I'll show you the brew rig, manifold, fermenters, all that cool. good stuff. All right. Here we go. So cool. Thank you so much. Um, so, Tony, um, what all we got here? So uh, this is the manifold. This is kind of where the whole brewery comes together. So everything starts with the uh, liquor tank back there. That's kind of just, no, there's no liquor involved, hot water. Okay. Bring the hot water over through these pipes up to the mash tun. Uh, that's when it gets mixed with uh, the grain. Steep it just like you're making tea. Get all the good sugar, protein, all that good stuff out okay. of there. Okay. And then uh, again, once th again through this and goes over to the boil kettle. That's when uh, the hops go in is during the boil. Gotcha. Okay, so cool. So we got this. It's all going through. It's all getting done. It comes over and it, and it comes out and it goes out. It goes somewhere. And how does it get now to the people who want to actually enjoy what you guys have created here? Well, there's a big chunk that goes right through the tap room, of course, where you were. Okay. Um, but in the end, the future of the business is in distribution. We have to distribute outside. Okay. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to uh, offer it in different formats. We have 22 ounce bottles, a couple of bottles that are licensed right now that we can already sell. And there's a local bottle shop that has them on the shelf and some other places. Um, and then we also offer it in soda cans, sit what they're called six dolls, half kegs. What, okay, what's a six toll? I've never heard so of a six So it's a sixth before. of a keg or a sixth of a barrel. Okay. Uh, but nobody uses barrels anymore except for measuring. You'll never see one because no one can lift them. <laughs> we, we, that thing you call a keg is a half keg. Okay. It's a half barrel. It's about 160 that. pounds full. We got some gals in the tap room who can lift them and, and tap them. They're pretty amazing. Um, but we want to offer it in that format so it gets in a bar tap. And when you go into a bar, we want you to see our cannon and we want you to want that beer. Um, so we have a distributor sign up, Tri-Cities Beverage, and we're actively out running tastings, going to bars and restaurants, and trying to get people to really want this beer uh, on tap. And we're getting some traction finally, and that's, that's the ultimate game for us. Cool, cool. Now, is it the bottling, does that all actually happen here, or is there a different... Yeah, so they do all the bottling right here by hand. Oh, wow. Um, yep. But in the beginning of next year, we're going to move towards a more automated system and probably go to canning so we can offer six packs of 12 ounce cans uh, so that people have better access to the beer. Are microbrews for you guys, is it generally more on the bottle side? I mean, is there more interest in getting a bottle or are you seeing that now? Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's like the PC Mac debate. You never satisfy everybody. <laughs> Some people who love bottles get bottles. But cans are really a better package for beer. It'll hold the beer better. Uh, but getting that message out and, and educating uh, people, that's part of our responsibility right now too. Because canning, it's easier, it's cheaper, it stacks better, it's lower volume. It's just a better package. More efficient. Kind and, of. It, yep. and it's better tasting beer. Really? In the end, because it'll stay longer in a can. No light gets through a can. The thing with bottles, while you get brown bottles and green bottles, you're trying to keep the, the light away from the beer. So when it comes to the creative design of the labels, the tap handles, all that good stuff, is that something you guys have an outside firm doing? You, you do that yourselves? That's really humorous. We have no outside support. Um, everything is done by brass cannon guys. In fact, the cannons on the top of the handles, they're molded by Phil, the guy who runs it. He molds them one at a time in a mold that he made and then paints them. The colors on the tap handles are all originated from these guys. Uh, when they were really thinking about doing this and wanting to share their beer with the world, they wanted to do it right, and they came up with all of these ideas that they put into reality. And that's what you see. That's really cool. Well, guys, thank you so much for taking me around today. Yeah. Matt, good Tony, to really appreciate it. I guess we'll head out and try some of these beers. Sounds good. Well, that was fun. Yes, it was. Thank you so much for bringing me here today. Yeah. Uh, the guys were so nice. I got to learn a little bit about stuff going on in the back. You learned something, I right? did. I did learn <laughs> something. Awesome. So it was really fun. We got to drink some great beer. Yeah. So oh, that yeah. was a lot of fun. So I guess uh, maybe off to the next one. Let's do the next one. All right. <laughs>